Hey, I'm Sam and I do design, and in the video today, I am showing you how to make this realistic interior in Keyshot. I found this really nice image on the Find Store on Instagram, and I really wanted to try and replicate it in Keyshot. So I thought I would make this tutorial to show you how I used HDRI images and equalizers and curves at the end to make the image really realistic. This video is sponsored by Ineo, who has hooked me up with Keyshot 9 to bring great tutorials to you. So the first thing that we've got is our room that I built in Shaper 3D on the iPad just to get a really simple block shape in there. And it is really important to model the room in the exact dimensions that you need. So the same dimensions that it would be in real life. That's so that Keyshot knows where to bounce the light around inside it and it knows how far the light bounces around and all of that physics stuff. The other thing that is really important is to make sure that all of the walls are there. So again, Keyshot knows that it needs to bounce light off the back wall, it needs to bounce light off the ceiling. And if you have any of the walls missing, then uh, light will actually either escape from the room or bounce in from the HDRI, the, uh, the overall image around the scene that we don't want to happen. So make sure that it's in the right units and make sure that every wall is included. I've gone ahead and applied the materials that I want to use. So I've used a concrete material for the floor. I think this is a polygon material, but you can get your textures from anywhere on the internet, whether that's textures.com or polygon or just Google. As long as it's a tiling texture, then uh, you can uh, apply those. And I've also applied a paint material to the wall along with some bump maps and some roughness, uh, just to try and get some different variation. And if I press C on the keyboard, you can see that this is the roughness uh, node that I'm using. So it's gonna give us some elements. The darker elements are gonna be slightly shinier. The lighter elements are gonna be slightly rougher. And that's gonna give it that uh, hand painted look that happens in the real world. So that's why I did that. Next up is to apply the chair into the scene. Again, because I'm using the source material, I wanted to find a chair that matched pretty similarly to the one that was in the image. Uh, I didn't find the exact chair, but I think it's not far off. It's the same sort of vibe, uh, same sort of material, so that's okay. I think this chair in particular was from a website called Dimensiva, which has a bunch of free assets on there. Um, it has some paid, models on there as well, but you can use any website like Turbo Squid or CG Trader. Uh, there are plenty out there to try and get some free model assets. And again, I just applied the material, but that is not what this tutorial is about. This tutorial is about the HDRI scenes. So the overall image that wraps around the model and lights it. So anywhere there's light, you will see uh, that that is a light source and anywhere that's dark, that's gonna uh, throw some, uh, sh some shadow in there as well. So what we want to do first off is to make a new environment. Uh, let's, let's call this tutorial. And the first thing that we want to do is come over into the HDRI editor and make the background black. And the reason why I'm making the background black in this tutorial, whereas in other tutorials I've made the background white, is because we want a really stark contrast between the highlights and the shadows. And adding in this black color is going to really help with that. Uh, the next thing we want to do is add a pin. And again, it's going to show up wherever we, um, oops, it's going to show up wherever we put it because we've got this, uh, this position turned on. So we can just press done and we can see it's there. Actually, what I'm going to do with this pin is make it as small as I think uh, makes sense. So uh, in the image in the sky, it looks like this tiny little dot. And that is what is going to simulate the sun. Uh, what I need to do then is come over to the color of that uh, color of that pin and pick a neutral color, maybe moving towards the uh, warm spectrum. Uh, and I'm in Kelvin because Kelvin is what nature uses in the real world. Nature doesn't use RGB or any of these colors. Nature uses Kelvin. So because we're trying to simulate the natural sun, go down to Kelvin and pick a neutral but slightly warm color. Okay. And because it is such a small pin, we need to make it really bright. So the larger your pin is, the uh, the lower the brightness can be. But because it is such a small pin, we need to make this like seriously very bright. 
And with that, you can see that it is now throwing some light into the scene, but it is in the wrong uh, orientation altogether. So we need to come down and, and use the transform to uh, actually make sure that it's, it's in the right sort of place. And we want it behind the windows. I think maybe a 35 inclination. Uh, and what we can do is actually jump into the scene using one of the cameras that I've set up. I've set these up already. Um, I've applied a little bit of a shift to this camera, which what that does, because, I, because I've got a, a vertical shift of minus 0 0.05 is, actually I can show you with, uh, with a really exaggerated shift that, um, let's use it over here. It's actually changing the way that the, uh, the image is projected onto the camera, if that makes sense. So with a shift of zero, everything is perpendicular to the camera and perfectly parallel. But as you start to uh, add in some shifts, uh, you can actually start to look down on things, but uh, it keeps all of the parallel elements of the room, you know, all the vertical elements of the room parallel. And that's really important for architectural photos, architectural renderings. A lot of the mistakes that I see in the early times of uh, people rendering is that they want to look down on something, but that means that all of the vertical elements are at crazy angles. And that's fine if you want to try and get a, a photograph that looks like it's been taken on a phone or taken on a camera. But if you want the glossy final editorial photos and renders that you see in magazines, they all have the uh, vertical lines nice and parallel. So that's just an extra little tip in there. Anyway, uh, I've lost track of what I was actually talking about. Oh yeah, it was the HDRI. So we're gonna, we're in a performance mode at the moment. We're gonna change into interior, which is of course uh, what we want to be in to simulate interiors. And you can see that uh, the sun is pretty much in the right place. Um, I can't remember exactly what it was for this tutorial for the main image. So I'm just going to start guessing. Uh, maybe something more like that. Maybe something in the middle. Let's just try that for now. Uh, I can always go ahead and, and change that later on. But what you will notice is that it's still very dark in the scene. Now, what I would normally do in that scenario is say, okay, we want some more light coming through that window. So I'm going to throw in a pin over here and let's call this like five and try and throw in some light this way. Okay, so then we can try and get more light that doesn't necessarily cast the hard shadows, and the small sun is going to make sure that those hard shadows are cast. Uh, I didn't do that for this uh, image. What I actually did was uh, a combination of the HDRI and also the curves that we will come on to in a minute. So it's a combination of uh, the natural lighting and also some post-processing that lets us get that nice bright interior. So I'm gonna come back over here and I am gonna add in this just a little bit, very faded as in, uh, I need to make that a lot darker. So something like 0 0.3. Uh, and what that's gonna do is just make sure that there's some light catching on the um, on the chair just a little bit, but it doesn't add a lot of light into the scene. So we're only using that second pin for some nice highlights. With that being said, the HDRI is done. And I know it's very dark, but we're going to use, like I said, the post-processing to add some uh, light into there. Okay, so we can uh, update the HDRI so it becomes high definition again. And uh, we're gonna use tone mapping and curvature from the photographic section of the image tab. Now, normally in, in all the images that I've used in the past, I've only ever used basic. And uh, I've, I've always said to uh, use the levels adjustment in Photoshop after the fact if you want to do that. But in this tutorial, I'm actually using the uh, tone mapping and the curvature to add brightness into the scene. So all I need to do is add in some extra um, exposure. And I think I used about four. And you can see that already it's adding in a lot to the image. Now, the reason why I'm doing that is because the difference between this uh, section here and this bright section, I'm imagining is kind of like a, uh, a percentage. Like this bright section is 100% brighter than this section, for example. 
But uh, if I start adding in the pins to uh, and, and start brightening up the image with those pins, then we're changing that proportion and we're changing that percentage. So if we look over at the image that we're trying to replicate, everything is actually pretty bright. Um, and the, the floor has even blown out. Like the floor is completely white and so is these sections on the wall. And I wanna try and simulate that by using the equalizer at the end as well. So uh, all I did was added in the exposure, changed the contrast slightly. And I've got some numbers that I was using for the, for the original image that I posted on the thumbnail, but I'll tell you, it's, it's just a lot of messing around and a lot of uh, trying different things out, seeing what works, sliding things around and, and going back to things if it doesn't work. And that's okay. I'm going to uh, save you the hassle of doing that and just start to punch in the numbers that I had uh, in the original one. And uh, ooh, we've got a, a key shot glitch that I have actually told them about and they've agreed that it is a known glitch that they will be fixing. Let's see if changing back to my original HDRI fixes that, but let's see. Anyway, I'm going to pump in the numbers that uh, that I had. Uh, and seriously, there, there was just so much messing around with, you know, adding in some highlights, adding in some mid-tones. Uh, and already, like, you can start to see that the, the overall look of the image really starts to change with adding these in. And I'll just come down and uh, add this in. So those are the settings that I had in my original image for the thumbnail. And again, changing the uh, changing each section is going to correspond to the uh, the darks, the the shadows, and moving up to the highlights. And we can see that this spike is uh, showing us that we've got the highlights in there. Okay, so that, I'll be honest, is pretty much everything that I did. The only little bit of post-processing that I did was uh, I saw that in the original image, this uh, section of the wall is quite a lot brighter than the section here. And in the setup that we've got on my render, they're pretty much the same color. So the only thing that I did in Photoshop was just uh, select, make a selection of this uh, part of the wall and just brighten it ever so slightly, just a, a localized change. And apart from that, this is how the uh, overall image was rendered. So from finding a balance between the HDRI and what that is lighting, and also some post-processing with the equalizer and the curvature graph, you can really start to add in light into the scene without needing to add and pump in a whole bunch of light and HDRI or adding in planes and the windows to try and make you know light coming in from the windows. Uh, which I've heard people do quite a lot, but trying to use the ex the exposure really helps with uh, not needing as many HDRI pins. I'm going to end the tutorial there. Thank you so much for listening. If you learned anything in the video, don't forget to let me know in the comments down below because I love hearing about those. Don't forget to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, the bell button, and everything else that YouTube asks you to do. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.